we spend a third of our lives not eating, not learning, not moving, but sleeping. This shouldn't come as a surprise to you, but we spend more time in our bedrooms on our bed than anywhere else in our home. But how much time did you spend shaping, forming, designing, perfecting the space? Does it work for you? Is it comfortable? Do you enjoy being in it? In this video, I'm going to go through nine important dimensions that we should all know and be aware of to make our bedroom very comfortable and ergonomically correct. Ergonomically? Economically? Economic? Blah blah blah? It, it's a really difficult word for me to say. Economic? Blah, blah, blah. It's the study of how the human body relates to its environment, whether you're standing, sitting, reaching and moving within the space. The first dimension is for your bed. For a bedroom accommodating two people, you should aim for at least 1.2 meters in width because personal space is important even when you're unconscious. <laughs> And there should be 10 centimeter between your head and the headboard and 10 centimeters between your feet and the end of the bed. If you're taller than 1.9 meters, consider... I'm oh, sorry, I'm just I'm so distracted by my cat. He's just in the corner being really, really weird. Okay, anyway, so... um. If you're taller than 1.9 meters, consider getting a bed that's 2.1 meters in length. This ensures that your feet don't dangle off the bed so the monster under the bed can't come out and grab you. The standard height for a bed is around 55 to 60 centimeters. But if you enjoy sitting on the edge of the bed, contemplating life, shedding dramatic tears, or simply procrastinating starting your day, then probably a bed that's a little bit lower is good for you. It then makes your bed become the perfect spot for your melodramatic moments. Some beds can be as high as 75 centimeters, and this is something you should take into consideration if you have small kids who like to climb into bed with you, because that is quite a high depth to fall from. Maybe you can put a very, very high rug on the floor to kind of cushion their fall a little bit. Or you can just do what my boyfriend does, which is just throw all the pillows I have onto the floor because he doesn't like them. So the head of the bed should be at least 20 centimeters higher than the mattress to protect the wall and stop pillows from falling off. If you have bunk beds, make sure there's enough space for an adult to sit up without banging their head. And this dimension is normally 1.35 meters. Head injuries are never a good idea. I mean, this is what we use to make money and, you know, keep memories alive and live. So keep it safe. For a bedside table, ensure it's around 10 centimeters higher than the mattress to provide a comfortable height for you to place a glass of water or your book or your phone. Things that you want to be able to easily reach while you're being horizontal. If you're considering a wall-mounted reading light, here is a rule that could be quite handy to have. Measure about 20 centimeters from the edge of the mattress and then go upwards about 60 centimeters. This is where the light source should be positioned. At this spot, it gives you the perfect illumination for those late night reading sessions. To ensure comfortable movement around the furniture in the space, to avoid feeling really squished up, like you live in a place that's too small, you should have enough clearances between the furniture. You want to be able to move your arms, legs, torso and all parts of your body freely. So here are some recommended clearance dimensions. Leave between 45 centimeters to 70 centimeters gap between the bed and the wall. Ideally, go for 70 centimeters to allow for easy getting out of bed and for making it. And yes, making your bed is highly recommended. So having enough space just makes this task extra easy for you. I'm all about having an easy frictionless life. Provide a one meter gap in front of the wardrobe and in front of your dresser. So you have enough space for opening the doors and drawers. If you have twin beds in one room, leave at least 55 centimeters between them, which allows for a small table to fit comfortably. Ah, the wardrobe a place to store our costumes that we wear to pretend that we've got our life together. Hmm, 
So for hanging your clothes, here are some average space requirements. For men, you should have a wardrobe of around 19 centimeters wide. So for women, we tend to have a bit more clothes, so a wardrobe of 1.4 meters wide should accommodate most of our clothes. Generally, you should leave 1 meters in height to store all your short outfits and 1.6 meters in height for your coats, gowns, long dresses, things that are long. In terms of depth, it's generally recommended to go for a wardrobe that's at least 60 centimeters deep. We need that depth because hangers can be as wide as 50 centimeters, and you don't really want to have your clothes all squished up or to have hangers always poking out of the door so you can never close your wardrobe properly. According to ergonomic guidelines and industry practices, Wardrobe handles are typically installed between 80 cm and 120 cm above the floor level. But of course, these recommendations should be adjusted based on specific needs or user groups. So if the wardrobe is meant for small kids, you could probably lower the handle height. If you have a makeup table in your bedroom, the desk should be a height that aligns with your elbows and wrists which is typically between 70 and 76 centimeters. And for leg room, you should aim for a minimum clearance of 60 centimeters between the bottom of the desk and the floor in order to move around comfortably. When it comes to mirrors, give yourself approximately 50 centimeters of distance between the mirror and your body so you can really have like a good look. Um, I mean, if you're this close, you don't really see anything except the freckles and developing wrinkles on your face and nobody wants to see this. <laughs> if you want to have a rug in your bedroom, you should choose one that extends at least 60 centimeters out from beneath your bed. Anything smaller would look out of proportion with your bed, but of course, if you only have small rugs, you can also layer them together to create a collage of big rug. So these are the general dimensions that's good to keep in mind when you're designing your bedroom. I hope you found this useful. If you did, you might be interested to look at some of my other videos. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Subscribe if you haven't so you can keep updated. Bye.